Alrighty guys, welcome back to the shop. The knife makers of YouTube organized by Tyrell Knife Works are competing once again in a knife makers challenge. This time around we're going to be making daggers. I really appreciate these challenges and the work that goes into setting them up, so major shout out to the other competitors and Mr. Tyrell. I gotta say I've always felt slightly behind the eight ball in these challenges. I'm not used to working on a timeline and this dagger was a mad dash to the finish line. Once again, I'll be making a style of knife I haven't made before. Not only have I never made this dagger, but I've also never made a knife of this size. This dagger was an excellent opportunity to test out the saucer small wheel attachment sent to me by George from Northridge Tool. The kit comes with a few different sizes and a platen to cut your belts with. I think the belt cutter is particularly a good idea. It works by replacing your existing platen and inserting a razor blade from the back of the platen through the belt. Once I had the belts cut, I scribed some grind lines and a bar of 1084 and set it up on my work rest so that I could cut a fuller in the center of the bar. Overall, like everything from Northridge, these saucer small wheels are a really well made item. However, in this application, I wasn't particularly happy with the results in the fuller. I think a big part of it was the user error of me using JFlex belts with this attachment. I went back and looked over Northridge's Instagram and they used the attachment with a more rigid ceramic belt. This likely would have produced a better result and I'll try it in the future for sure. Also, looking at their Instagram, the saucer small wheel appears to do a darn good job at cutting serrations, and I could see it being used for a gut hook as well. As always, I appreciate George giving me the opportunity to test some new attachments, and I plan to keep messing around with the saucer in future projects. To finish out the fuller on this dagger, I resorted to my largest small wheel and was able to achieve my desired dimensions. I worked the finish up to a 400 grit cork belt. Now that the fuller is ground nice and centered in my bar, I'll work on profiling the dagger. I made a template in NanoCAD, which is a free CAD software, and then printed it out with two pieces of paper, which I taped together to get the full length. Getting the template centered on the fuller I just ground was pretty challenging, and it took a little finagling around. I ended up cutting some windows in the template so that I can line them up with the center line of the bar. To remove bulk material out of this 250,000 thick piece of 1084, I started with my benchtop bandsaw. Being such a thick piece of material, the cutting was slow, but the job got done. I did the rest of the profiling down to my template lines with the Northridge 2x72. I started off in the normal vertical orientation to remove bulk material, then laid the grinder down horizontally to achieve smooth, square lines along the dagger's edge. With a dagger, it seems like you're constantly chasing symmetry, and to make my life easier, I decided to mill each side of the dagger so that I have a parallel datum to work from. I achieved this by using my 3990 mini mill from littlemachineshop.com and a one half of an inch end mill. I did a whole video on this mill a couple of months ago and have been extremely happy with its performance thus far. Once I have nice flat parallel surfaces to work with, I used a height scribe on my granite surface plate to mark out some guidelines. One thing I found out with this project, which was really rhetorical, is that grinding bevels on a dagger is difficult. Normally you're attempting to get two bevels even and symmetrical, but obviously on a dagger you're going to be doing this with four bevels. With a long blade like this one, I'm finding the push stick method to work fairly well, and you can see here that I'm using a Teflon push stick to apply pressure into the belt. At this point in the process, I'm just trying to get the bevels rough ground in before heat treating, and I'll come back to true everything up post tempering. To harden this blade, I'll be using my DIY heat treating oven. I built this oven a while back and have a full video tutorial posted on how I did it if you're interested. The steel I'm working with came annealed from the vendor, and I'm just going to be running some normalization cycles before quenching it. I did one at 1600, one at 1550, and then I quenched at 1500 in the park's 50 quenching. After which I clamped the blade in my straightening plates to ensure I came out of the process with a straight dagger. The blade stays straight and hardened up nicely. You may have seen during the quench that I had a little fireball, which doesn't normally happen to me. I'm thinking it's because I had a lot more steel here than I'm used to working with, and the knife maintained a higher heat than I normally have pulling out of the oil. All that said, I did have a fire extinguisher handy, and I would advise all of you to have multiple fire extinguishers in your shop. I ran two two-hour tempering cycles on this blade at 390 degrees Fahrenheit, then moved over to the 2x72 to start cleaning up my bevels, fuller, and plunges. I worked the fuller back to a 400 grit cork bell finish, and progressively work my bevels and plunges up to a 320 grit J-Flex belt. I also use my surface grinding attachment to clean up the Ricasso area. 
Before fully dialing in my plunges on the waterfall platen, I decided to hand sand up all my bevels to a 320 grit Rhino wet sandpaper finish. It's at this point that the thought went through my mind that this blade would look awesome stone washed. However, I abandoned this thought in order to match the Apple iPhone emoji that I was shooting for. I started using a waterfall platen after watching Master Smith Kyle Royer and it's done pretty good for me. I really need to order some Trizac J-Flex belts to try out on it since the belt bump with the aluminum oxide J-Flex belts can be a pain to deal with. With the little bevels on the dagger, it was a bit of a challenge to index the knife onto the platen, but with some patience, I got the job done. In the next operations, I'll be doing some milling on the tang along with some threading, so I wanted to soften it up some. I started at the tip of the tang with a torch and worked the straw color back towards my ricasso. I was shooting for a straw color right at the ricasso and a bluish color towards the end of the tang. I used a quarter of an inch carbide end mill to mill in my shoulders and then I also relieved the ricasso by around eight thousandths of an inch to make my guard fitting easier. I then moved towards the tang side of the knife by around a quarter of an inch and relieved an additional five thousandths of an inch there. This ensures I won't have to deal with the majority of the tang while fitting my guard. This process worked out pretty darn good for me and definitely makes you realize how valuable a mini mill can be for the knife maker. After I got the milling done on the tang, I removed material from the tang downstream of the milling to make sure it was thinner than the milled section. If you don't do this, the guard slot would end up being too big for the milled ricasso. To clean things up, I also rounded over most of the corners of the tang with a slack belt. For my guard, I'm going to be using a 3 8 thick piece of stainless steel. To get everything prepped for the slotting and fitting, I start off by milling the guard square on all four flats. This ensures I'm not going to have any unwanted misalignments throughout the process. The 3990 mill with this one and one half of an inch face mill did a great job and I really like the finish that the face mill put on the guard. I've been asked about this face mill a few times on Instagram, so I'll put an affiliate link to it in this video's description. I picked up this guard slotting method I'll be using today from soon to be master smith Carl Anderson. He uses some clamps on his mill table to set up table stops on each side of the slot, then progressively mills the slot deeper. I like his method and I think I'll be building some integral table stops for this mill in the near future. Using my newly installed digital readout, I milled the slot pretty much exactly to the thickness of the tang I'm fitting, plus around one or two thousandths of an inch. On the back end of the guard, I used a larger quarter inch end mill to relieve my guard slot and make it so that I'm not fussing around with fitting more than 40 thousandths of an inch of the guard. The corners of my guard slot are rounded due to the end mill, so I use a file that has been surface ground on the flats to square up these corners. This will allow the guard to fit into the tank shoulders without any gaps. Once I have the corners fairly square, I'll test fit the guard onto the tang by driving it on with a hammer. This process is repeated until I have a square guard fit without any visible gaps. I'm not going to lie, I'm still a novice with this process, so this took me a few hours to complete to my liking. Guard fitting is one of those knife making processes that can really distinguish a skilled knife maker from a newbie and requires a significant amount of practice to get right. I'm still learning for sure and have a long way to come, but I was pretty darn happy with the fit up I achieved on this guard. Now that the guard is fit, we're going to move on to the handle. I'll be using a piece of ebony for my handle on this dagger, which I think obviously matches the emoji color pretty darn well. Like the guard, my first step is to make the block square and true with a one and one half of an inch face mill on my mini mill. This process can be a little messy, so I make sure to have the shop back running. I purchased some extra long 3 16ths of an inch end mills for slotting my tangs. This allows me to use my mill to slot the handle block tang holes, which is really nice. It took me a while to find this guy on Amazon, so like the face mill, I'll put a link to it below. Having a nice crisp tang slot in your handle really helps the fitting process and reduces some of the handwork. At this juncture, I decided to round over the part of my tang that I'll be threading. I really wish I would have taken more time here to scribe in some layout lines, but I guess I was in a hurry and just winged it on the belt grinder. Everything ended up working out, but I had to make some adjustments later in the build to accommodate my hastiness. For my pommel, I ordered some one and one half of an inch 416 stainless cutoffs on eBay, and I was able to get around 30 pounds of cutoffs for around 50 bucks. I used my 1930s Atlas Craftsman lathe to clean up the face of this bar and also turned in some chamfers. I ended up leaving the turned finish on my pommel because I thought it would look cool. However, at the end of the project, I wish I would have brought them up to a satin finish. I cut my pommel out of the bar with a hacksaw 
since I really suck at using the cutting tool on my lathe and then cleaned up the other side of it. With the pommel turned, I clamped it up in my mill vise to mill in a flat. This will be the part of the pommel that fits up against my ebony handle. I then use an edge finder to start locating the center of my pommel. While this center finding method is possible without a digital readout, I never took the time to use it since it was kind of a pain to do. But with a DRO, this process is really precise and quick. Once I get the center started, I drill a one quarter of an inch hole all the way through the pommel, and I will eventually turn the pommel over and mill in a 5 16 of an inch shoulder to accept my finial. While I have the center of the pommel found, I use my DRO to locate some dowel pin holes. These pins will allow me to put the knife together and take it apart multiple times during the fit up process and have all the pieces oriented the same way each time. Like I mentioned, I'll be using a piece of 5 16 of an inch stainless steel for my finial, so I'm going to use a 5 16 of an inch end mill to mill in a shoulder on my pommel. Once I got it all lined up in the mill, adding this shoulder was painless. The last piece we need to make here is the finial. I'll be forming this guy on the lathe using an E32 collette and my four jaw chuck. I really need to get with littlemachineshop.com and get their opinion on a three jaw chuck for my lathe in order to make turning these small diameter pieces easier. But this is what I had so I rolled with it. I turned down the 5 16 of an inch rod to around a quarter of an inch and then drilled a hole in the center of the finial to accept the threads of my tang. Generally, I like to use a 1032 thread, but I reduced my tang diameter a little too much on the grinder and had to thread a 1024. Once I got it threaded, I cleaned it up with some sandpaper and drilled an eighth of an inch hole on the end to give me a way to put the knife together and take it apart. Now that all the pieces are made, I went back to the guard and handle to drill my locator pins. I centered them up in the mill and then used the same dimensions I had on the pommel. This is a little different than the spacer method I've used in the past, but it seemed to work out pretty well. Once again, this is a major flex on the part of the digital readout. Once you get one of these bad boys, you'll wonder how you ever use the mill without one. If y'all are interested in what it takes to install a DRO on a mini mill, I'll put my video tutorial in the cards above. At this point in the build, all the handle pieces are fitted up and all we have to do now is get them shaped. I drew up a guard shape in NanoCAD and printed it out. I then cut out a fourth of it and glued it to a thin piece of sheet metal. This will be the guide I use to scribe the shape of my desired guard into my existing guard. I clamped the template onto the face of the guard while fitted onto the blade inscribe all four quadrants. This ensures my fitted guard will be nice and symmetrical to the Ricasso. Using the bandsaw and the 2x72 belt grinder, I removed material down to my scribe lines. I brought the sides up to a 320 grit finish. This is really one of the nice use cases for a grinder that can tilt horizontally since all my scratches will be going in the appropriate direction. I'm going to be grinding in a chamfer around the entire guard and to do this I decided to rig up an extension to my work rest. This will allow me to use my grinder in the horizontal position to rough in and finish this chamfer. I'll be grinding in this chamfer at around 50 degrees. I started off by marking in some target grind lines with my height gauge on the surface plate. I then pulled up a stool to the grinder and spent around an hour roughing in the chamfers with a 60 grit belt and finished them out all the way to a 400 grit cork belt. With the guard finished up, I moved on to the handle. I found this handle pretty darn hard to keep symmetrical, but I guess that's everything with a dagger. I ground in a slight palm swell in the center of the handle in order to fill the hand comfortably. I used a 1-2-3 block covered with masking tape to rest the ricasso of my blade on and mark out some target grind lines. I also marked off where the edges of the pommel land on my handle so that I don't over grind past them. Once I cleaned up the back end of the handle, I marked some angles on the front of the handle block in order to accommodate the guard dimensions. During the initial shaping process of this handle, I kept everything very angular. This helped me move the facets around in order to achieve the best symmetry I could. While they look cool, they weren't comfortable in the hand and I ended up rounding everything over. To achieve this rounding, I used a slack belt on my 2x72 belt grinder. After I had sanded the entire handle up to a thousand grit finish, I gently bull nosed over a portion of the handle to meet up with the pommel. The handle at this point was kind of a pain to manage and I really need to build a jig to hold handles like this in the future. Before we can put this guy together, I need to make one more pass at hand sanding the blade and etch in my maker's mark. I'll be using my DIY etching machine I made a while ago on the channel. If you go back to that video, please don't judge the production quality because it's pretty bad. Since I get asked on just about every video now, I get my stencils from TUS Industries. Alright, this is the start of the final assembly. 
I'm going to be epoxying this whole handle together. I start off by driving the guard onto the ricasso, ensuring there is no gapping. I then mix up some epoxy and carefully drip it into the recessed section on the back of the guard. I used to slap the whole handle together at this point, but I really have been liking this alternate method. I install my guard jack onto the tang in order to apply even pressure to the guard and hold it in its appropriate place while the epoxy dries. This ensures nothing moves around and I have a perfect guard fit before moving on to the rest of the handle. Like I said earlier, I have a long way to go, but this is the best guard fit I've been able to achieve to date. After the epoxy has had time to cure, I remove the guard jack and clean up any stray epoxy with a piece of brass. I make a few adjustments to the angle of my ebony block and then it's time to assemble the rest of the handle. I'll be using some West Systems G-Flex epoxy to get everything glued up. I start gluing up on the bench but quickly found that it was more convenient to do this on the vise. I took my time and poured the epoxy into the annulus between the tang and the epoxy block, being sure to work out any air bubbles. Once the bubbles were all cleared out and the handle was full of epoxy, I carefully installed my pommel and locator pins followed by the finial. I carefully tightened the finial and then left the handle to cure for 24 hours. After the epoxy was cured, I used a hacksaw to cut off the bulk material on the finial and then cleaned up the rest of it to a 400 grit cork belt finish on the belt grinder. I then used my housework sharpening kit on the 2x72 belt grinder running in reverse to sharpen the blade. This was a pretty darn challenging blade to sharpen and I made a few mistakes that I had to go back and fix on the hand sanding bench. Looking back over this project, I probably should have hollow ground this blade since my resulting blade geometry was a little obtuse. Part of my inspiration for this dagger, other than the Apple iPhone emoji, were the daggers used by Crusaders. I'm not sure about this, but I feel like knights would err on the side of a robust stabbing dagger than a thin, flexible, slicey dagger to fight other knights in armor. Like I said though, I'm not a historian and could be way wrong about that. So with that, I'm going to first go over some things I really like about this blade and then some things I didn't like. Before I do, I encourage all of y'all to go down into the description or pinned top comment and vote on your favorite knife from the participating YouTube channels. And don't worry, my feelings won't be hurt at all if y'all don't vote for mine. There are other knives that I've seen in this challenge so far that for sure deserve your votes more than mine. Okay, so the things I like about this dagger. First of all, I feel like it does a good job at looking like the Apple Dagger emoji, and since that was my goal, I can check that off the list. The second thing I really like about this knife is the guard fit. I really took my time with the guard and Ricasso area of this knife, and I think it showed on the finished project. I know I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I'm still learning the ropes on hidden tang knife construction, and I'm happy to improve from knife to knife. This handle fit up was one of the best I've done so far, and that's great. Now, onto the things I don't like about the dagger. First and foremost, the dagger is blade heavy. I really should have attempted a hollow grind on this dagger, and the fuller could have gone all the way through the tip. The grind resulted in a really obtuse edge that is more suited for chopping than slicing. However, like I mentioned, a crusader may not have minded that since he'd used the dagger to parry sword blows and stab through armor. I really don't like how I left the turned finish on the faces of the pommel. While I thought it could look cool, it ended up just looking unfinished to me. And my last gripe with this blade was symmetry. It may be hard to tell, but there are some slight symmetrical issues with the blade and ebony handle. While the casual user won't see it, I see it after being intimately tied to this dagger's construction. To those of you who have seen in the comments that may not like how I critique my blades at the end of my videos, I do apologize that it bothers you. However, let me try to explain why I feel it's so important. In knife making and in reality, any important endeavor in your life, you have to be critical of your work and hold yourself to a high standard in order to improve. On this channel, I'm not coming to you as a professional knife maker, but as a novice who is still trying to learn the craft. So please keep that in mind. As always, I love seeing any feedback in the comment section below. So if y'all got something out of this video, please consider subscribing to the channel and smash that like button. Until next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.